Hello and welcome to our third ProMedica Masterworks series concert, Epic Journeys. This is a concert that's really, really near and dear to us. It's just a wonderful concert with great works by Erilyn Wallen, Karim Rustam, and of course, Nikolai Rimsky, Korsakov's Scheherazade. We're going to be discussing some wonderful themes. These are, these are epic journeys. These are journeys over water. These are about the intersection of literature and history, of myth and music. And we're so excited to be able to present this to you. My name is Merwin Siu. I'm Principal Second Violinist and the Artistic Administrator of the Toledo Symphony. And I'll be joined by our wonderful music director, Alain Trudeau. Hello, Alain Trudel here, music director of your favorite orchestra and mine, the Toledo Symphony. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the music on this third Masterworks. We are playing, to start the concert, uh, the orchestra will be playing uh, a piece called The Mighty River. And it's by a fantastic black composer, Erilyn Wallen. Uh, we, we are doing a lot of discoveries this year and we're finding out there's uh, amazing composers that sometimes have been overlooked a little bit and we're really trying to find the very best pieces to bring down and there's lots of them. So I'm really happy that we can present this piece to you. Now the Mighty River is a premise, uh, the title, to have a parallel with, you know, like the strength of the, the mighty river and the, the thrust of the, the water going, uh, wanting to come out and be like free to human beings and people wanting to be free. So this is what's behind it. You will recognize also, and it's interesting because our origin, she was born in Belize, so that's South America or middle. And uh, after that, she went to, to England. And, and finally, we have this poem that as a little bit of origins of different places. The first, I would say, the opening statement is made by the French horn, and it is Amazing Grace. So it's really interesting because we have an English poet, American composer, together in this piece that talks about for its Amazing Grace. So it starts like that. It moves around, it's modulated in many ways. What's also very interesting about this piece is not like a concert overture, it's really a symphonic poem of great breath. I don't want to give out too much. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Again, Mighty River by the fantastic composer, Erilyn Wallen. The second piece in our program is an amazing clarinet concerto written by the composer Karim Rustam and performed by our amazing soloist, Kinan Azme. Both of these musicians are from Syria originally. And unfortunately, they have not been able to return to their home country for almost a decade. They really bonded um, over kind of the shared experience kind of surrounding Arab Spring in 2011 and have really created together this concerto that reflects on so many of the consequences of that immensely important time in history. One of the things that makes this concerto an especially good fit in this particular concert is that it bridges the gap between legend and myth and history. Um, and here, uh, Mr. Rustam uses two amazing works of literature, one written millennia ago, um, Homer's The Odyssey, and one written just a few short years ago, uh, the author's Melissa Fleming, and the piece is called Hope More Powerful Than the Sea. This concerto actually puts the clarinetist as the protagonist in both of these works, um, both Odysseus um, braving the Mediterranean Sea and being buffeted over years and years by evil gods, horrible storms, and then, you know, now just a f again a few short years ago, um, the, the woman Doa Al-Zamel, who was a Syrian refugee who was trying to make landfall in Italy. Her boat was actually uh, run over by another boat and nearly 500 people were left in the Mediterranean to drown. She was able to find a child's life ring and she was given charge of two young children and she was able to stay alive in the Mediterranean even though she wasn't able to swim with no water, with no food and to keep um, those infants alive 
um, until they were able to be picked up by a boat. And it's just a harrowing but a heroic story. And when Mr. Rustam was reading about this, he was struck by the parallels between the Odyssey and Doa's journey. And we are really brought into those worlds by this concerto. You hear the orchestra really representing the sea and its immense power. You almost feel the unfairness of the orchestra against a solo clarinetist. But for me, I think the most powerful thing about this um, concerto is actually the conclusion of the piece where there's almost this sense of sanctuary. And it's not really homecoming, it's not really peace, but it's sanctuary. And I think it, it really powerfully evokes what it feels like to be a refugee and to come to a new land and to find this kind of precarious feeling between hope and peace and novelty and uncertainty. And I think the music captures that extraordinarily well. And though this piece was written a few years ago, it's immensely timely right now as Toledo among other cities in the country prepare to welcome Afghan refugees into, into Toledo. And I think it really helps uh, us as listeners empathize with just the stories that, you know, the stories and the narratives that refugees have to tell us. And it challenges our empathy and our imagination to make those journeys as comfortable and as, as meaningful as possible and for us to be as welcoming as we can. To conclude our concert today, we have one of the masterworks of the symphonic repertoire by Rimsky-Korsakov, Sheherazade. Now, Sheherazade is a musical version of some of the stories of the Thousand and One Nights. We all know the story of Thousand and One Nights. Uh, the king has been, uh, his wife has done him wrong, and he decides he's going to avenge on uh, every woman he meets uh, every day. And uh, it's, it's a little bit bizarre and gory, so we'll skip all those details. But we'll talk about the stories that Rimsky-Korsakov put in music. Now, what's great about Rimsky-Korsakov is that with Ravel, they're both, and Stravinsky, they're both, I could say, like the, the masters of orchestration, so the colors of the orchestra. And in this piece, it's like every instrument has a role in the story. So we'll start with the first one. The first one talks about the sea, the voyage on the sea, and Simbad's ship. So you hear at the beginning, there's a few chords that set the story. It sounds like once upon a time. Think about that when you'll hear the first, dum, pom, 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 pom. Oh, once upon a time on the sea. And then you hear that. And then we start with this long, long, um, this long theme that goes, uh, it's a motif that, that repeats, repeats. So you think you're like really on the sea like this on a huge ship. And this is the first part. It's quite simple. It just puts you in the context of the piece. And then we get right into the second movement. There, all the movements are linked together. So you can call it a symphonic poem if you want. It's, it's just a very special piece. And actually, it's very special. It's the first piece I ever conducted here and many moons ago. But I'm happy we're doing it again. It's the first time we do it since. So I'm very happy you get to, to hear it. Uh, the, next, uh, the next piece, uh, well, the next movement, if you want, the next part of the, the, the symphonic poem is the story of the, the Can uh, Candelar Prince. Now, what we have there is the story of Sherazad, who finds new stories to tell him every night, so she survives another day. So it starts with the violin. In the violin, you can very much see the storytelling. Yeah? He sings that, Kirk plays that wonderfully. So you'll hear that. And then another story with the bassoon, then another story with the oboe. And it keeps going like that. So different stories, different setting, all the way through that movement. So that's why it changes mood very often because there are different stories. You have to think that she's telling a bunch of stories to make sure that the next day she's still there. And she just stops before the, 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 the good part and says, well, I'll tell you more tomorrow. 
and gives her another day. Then we get into that, that third moment, which is a beautiful love story. It's the, the young prince and the princess. So you see, it's, very, it's almost Tchaikovsky-like. The, it's very generous, the sound and the strings and all of that. It's very beautiful. And there's very, the percussion also are used in such a nice way. You know, there's up to like five different parts in the percussion, plus the timpani in this. And they all play this integral thing, uh, intricate th things. And uh, it, in every movement, there's, there's different orchestrations. And this one is a very interesting with the snare drum, which is the tiniest, the most cute. And you can imagine the story of a young prince and a young princess falling in love and all their story. But enough of that. Now we get to the last moment and we go to the festival in Baghdad and the, the sea. Well, actually, it's the, the shipwreck at, uh, in the sea. So I'll start with the festival in Baghdad. So we start another day, another story, another setting. We get into the, the, the we're in the streets. It's very crowded, lots of noise. And you have very virtuosic music that, that goes on with it. And we get to this point where it's, it's more and more and more and more. And then it cuts and you will hear exactly the same music you heard at the beginning. Not the very beginning, but when you heard the um, uh, Sinbad's ship at the beginning. Dee, da, dee, da, da, dee, da. And you hear that. And then when it starts again, because we're back on the ship, he books in a little bit with the, with, with the sea. And then it really you, you hear it. It's more and more, and then there's a big shipwreck. And then we come back, and it's very intelligent what he did, because he goes back. From, the beginning is once upon a time, some beautiful chords and the winds that makes you think it's a story, a dreamland. And then we start in this one, shipwreck the other way. And then we go back to the, the, the sea. And then we go back to those chords from the beginning. And we have Sherazad by herself or by himself. It's Kirk today. But just playing over those beautiful chords and finishing up higher, 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 higher. And as we know, uh, Sherazad, maybe you don't know this, it means uh, savior of the city because she actually saves the city from the, the king who went a little bit mad. She saves him also. And of course she saves herself. So it ends like that and it's a beautiful, very high notes and very uh, expressive. So I hope you enjoy this performance of, with our wonderful Toledo Symphony of Sherazad. <laughs> 